All right, so week four of the class, we're going to continue to look at JSON. Uh, we have this activity where we can further, hopefully, wrap our minds around it, and then we're going to go into using uh, uh, the database, the database structure. So you should have a copy of JSON practice one. Our end result, let me show you that. Now, for testing purposes, our end result, we want to view it in um, Firefox. And when we test this, when we write our code in Notepad and then run it, we should run it in Firefox. The reason is Chrome is going to be a little bit too um, strict with security. So for our testing at the moment, we will be testing in Firefox. Let me show you the end result in Firefox. Uh, very basic screen. There's a button. I'm going to click the button. What will happen then is it will load an icon, a text, and a link. I'll click it again, and then a different icon, a different link. Now, this is, um, this is randomly choosing a social network. So it loads up a different social network icon, and then the text is clickable so that it opens up on one of these social networks. So there's Facebook, for example. I click on that, it goes off to Facebook. So what we're going to do is, is this. The concept is we're loading a social network with some data attached to the network and the functionality of clicking. This is going to reinforce concepts of JSON because this data is being stored in a sort of database. We're storing an image. We're storing a social network name. We're storing a link to the social network. And then also, um, for example, alt text to display about the picture or anything. So the concept is that we're going to store various bits of data in JSON format and retrieve the data. So again, on the end result, all the code is there. You can explore, but we'll do it together. And eventually what we're going to do is, well, we're going to have a file called, for example, social.json. That is going to store all of our information. Again, yeah, don't be like a kid on Christmas Eve that you already look at your presents. We're going to get to this when we're done in a moment. Your starting point is just the pictures. We're going to build this JSON file and then the HTML file. We're going to retrieve the pictures. We're going to build the data in the JSON file and then retrieve it on screen. So the first thing I want to do then is define a schema. I want to define how am I storing my data in a JSON file. So let's open up Notepad. Notepad++. And I'll go to File, Save As. into that folder where we're currently working. I'm going to save a file. I'm going to save a file in the project folder. I'll call it networks.json. Um, I think your the version of Notepad++ on yours has the actual save as type of JSON in your list. Uh, I, I don't think I have it, but it's still if I type .json at the end, it'll work. And remember, that's J-S-O-N, not J-A-S-O-N, JSON, J-S-O-N, JavaScript Object Notation. If you've got it on the save as type, you can select it. If you don't, you can still type it .json, and it should save it as a .json file. So I'm going to call this networks.json. Get this blank file. So what we're going to do then is, using JavaScript object notation, using JSON, we're going to store references to those pictures and other data related to each network. The point of this is that I've got, for example, the Twitter network, so I need to save the name Twitter. 
I need to save a description of what Twitter is. I need to save an icon for Twitter, and I need to save a link for Twitter. So different bits of data. All of those five or so pieces of data relate to one social network. I want to store that as one collection of data. That's a database. The way JSON works is, remember, we've got the curly braces. This JSON file, the only code that will be in here is JSON... Um, JSON um, compliant code. And remember with JSON we have the key and a value. Nothing else. No comment, no special comment tag, but it's a key and a value. And with this simple key value pair we can create any data scheme that we want. We're going to create a pretty complex one because we can store all of this object data. Um, this can include objects in objects. We can also include arrays. So we can reference the object in, uh, in array syntax. What we're going to store in uh, this JSON file, I'm going to break the curly braces like that, and I'm going to type social. Um, JSON needs quotes, double quotes, between each key and value. And so I'm going to have one key here of social, colon. Well, if we were doing this very easily, this could be something like this. The social network is Twitter. But I need to store the name of the social network, a link to the social network a picture of the network, a description of the network, and so forth. So instead of it simply being a sort of like a one-to-one -one data um, scheme, I'm going to use instead square brackets because now I'm going to put in an array of data in social. So in theory then, I would have a network Twitter, comma, Facebook, comma, Google Plus. Don't write this yet. But this is the idea. I'm going to store these three networks in the social field, let's say. And then the Twitter subfield would have its own description, its own link, its own picture. Facebook would have its own description, its own link, its own picture, and so forth. So we're using the square brackets as an array of data. And then conceptually it'll be more like this. The curly brackets again here means JSON. So we're going to have a JSON object as one of the index values of social. We're going to have another JSON object in the social array, and another one, and another one, and another one. We can define then multiple fields there within each one of these square brackets. So that's going to be like a complete set of data. All of that complete set of data, then eventually I'll be able to retrieve it something like social zero name, eventually. The zeroth index value, Twitter, give me its name. Social1, Social2, Google, give me its name. So this is reminiscent of what we've started to do previously. Um, so the big idea is that I have an array here. I'm going to break this array also into multiple lines for readability. Tab it over like that. And then I'll tab in here, and then I'll do my curly braces. The cool thing about JSON is that it's plain text. We can figure out how we're going to save our data ourselves, but it can get a little messy because we have all of this data in just plain text, in a plain text file. 
And so we can keep it on the same line, we can break it to multiple lines for readability and all of that. I'm going to break this into multiple lines, just hopefully so that it kind of gels conceptually. So I've got now JSON object in a JSON object. I'm going to break those lines apart. And I'm going to say, in quotes, name, space, colon. We'll start with... Uh, start with YouTube. See, I've got all of these icons already, 1 through 9. Um, that's the YouTube network, so the name of that one is YouTube. Comma, next line. We'll do desk description. We'll say for YouTube, this is long form videos. Comma. Say graphic. We saw previously that we can store information of a picture, but we don't store the raw data of the picture in the JSON file. We store a reference to the picture somewhere in the file system. We have a very simple one here in that in the folder of JSON Practice 1, I've got the pictures ready, pick 01, 02, up to 09. So then the reference to the actual graphic is simply pick 01.ping. Comma. One more, we'll do URL. This bit of data then is a link over to a web address, youtube.com slash um, instructor C. So it's a full web address. So these curly braces right here denote one complete set of data, all the data that defines YouTube. That is the zeroth index value of the social field, and all of that is in JSON format. If this is the zero width index of the array, now I want index value 1. I want my second network, line 8, which ends my first object, the zero width item, comma, curly braces again. So notice the syntax is a key, a value, colon in the middle, double quotes. Always double quotes, unless it's a number. If it's a number, then no quotes, of course, because then it's a number type quotes is for a string. And there's a comma after each field, so to speak, except the last one. It's the last item of data, so no final comma. This, then, if we, if we collapse this completely, that's one item, comma, next item, comma, next item, etc., until the last item, no final comma. We're going to do something very similar here. We'll do it manually first, then we'll copy and paste to save some effort. Same sort of thing. We need a sort of a field of name, second network that I have here is Vine. Comma. Description. Uh, have you heard of Vine before? What's Vine? What's the social network Vine? Yes, short bits of content, six second long videos. So we'll say here short form videos. It's got a graphic in the folder, so graphic, pick02, ping, and the URL for that, tip.com, uh, I'll put mine in there, it's probably embarrassing stuff in there, but anyway. So, this is one complete bit of data, this is another. I'm going to do this a couple more times. We have all those other networks that we'll, we'll do them eventually. We'll, we'll do three of them to start off with. So I'll do one more. And in this case, I'm going to copy and paste because this is, these are all the fields. I don't want to mistype it, graphic and such. So I'm going to select the whole curly brace chunk, comma at the end of 14, paste it in.
So now I've got a third network. Be careful here. Remember, line 14 needs a comma at the end of that because it's the second item of my array, line 2. Complete set of data. It's the last data in the series, so no final comma there. The next network's name, description, graphic, and URL. The third one is Twitter. So then the name of this one is Twitter. So we'll say here 140 character misses. That is pick three. Address uh, twitter.com slash PMD Interactive. We'll do the other networks a little later. This is enough data for the moment. This is a JSON file. It's a uh, flat database. It doesn't have, like you might be used to in traditional databases about a, you know, relational tables and all of that. Um, it doesn't have that built in, but you can define your schema if you choose to do it. This is all a big old JSON object. Um, with our experience in JavaScript in this class or other classes, the concept of that is that I have an object and then properties are defined or, or that object is made of properties. If I have the car object, its properties are like velocity and uh, color and make and model. Those are properties of the car object. Here we've got basically the social object and then there are these sort of sub um, properties, technically objects. So we've got objects as part of uh, the value of that key, all of this data. So we will be able to pull this out. Now, that don't write this. This is not valid code. But if we were back on our JavaScript file to access <coughs> some bit of data, I would do social 0.desk. And that would be accessing long form videos of my zero with item, the first item. If I wanted to get the, the address for Twitter, well, that's two, because we've got zero is YouTube, one is Vine, two is Twitter. And I'm saying from that social object, the second position, the se second index, the third object, give me its description which will be 140 character missives. If I wanted the address, well, then I'd say, give me the URL of the third item, the second index value. This is what we have so far. What's that? YouTube. Uh, probably send us to some spam site that will hack us. YouTube music. YouTube music. What's that? Oh, yes. We'll fix Vine here. Um, th that one is uh, vine.co. It's not .com, .co. Someone, had, someone else had .com before them. It's vine.co. Now, if you do visit any of those sites, remember you have volume on your computer, so you might want to mute that before. Okay, so we have this JSON file with references to data. We want to create an HTML file to read the data in the JSON file to process it. Um, the point of this is that I have Imagine on my flash drive, this is the server. On the server, I've got some file called networks.json. That's just a plain old um, text file with references to the pictures and other data. Then via HTML, 
we can look into that JSON file and use the data within it. And again, the importance of JSON is that this would be like something that, that Facebook would give you as a response. If you're trying to create the next Facebook app and you wanted to capture data from Facebook, Facebook is going to most likely give you back data in JSON format. So if we get used to how that could work, then we can write code to deal with the response from something like Facebook. So make sure you save your networks file. And here in uh, Notepad, let's go to File New. And we're going to create, again, a very basic HTML uh, blank document, as we've done a couple of times before. So the usual. say here, um, social network randomizer. Make sure you're saving that HTML file. I'll just call it index.html. Make sure you're saving it in the same uh, folder as your JSON practice starting file. If you came in a little bit late, you want to go into the network folder. There's a folder there called JSON Practice One Start. Get a copy of that. It's got our pictures and everything else we are writing ourselves. Just a little basic index file. We're going to create a simple button that we're going to click. It'll do a bunch of things. It'll ran it'll connect to the JSON file. It'll randomly choose a network. It'll then display it on screen. It'll it'll get data from the JSON file, which we will process to then display on screen. So the HTML portion is going to be very simple. It's just going to be <coughs> a button and some sort of placeholder, like a div. the The main action will happen, of course, in the JSON. I mean, in the JavaScript section. So after that H1, um, let's create a button. I'll say here, random network. We'll give that an ID so that we can reference it, btn random. And after the button, we will create a div, plain old div placeholder with an ID. Uh, I'll call that div show. So we have a button that will do stuff and a div that will show stuff. Checking my result. Uh, again, let's, let's be running this in Firefox. Chrome is going to be a little bit too uptight with security because we're going to access an external file and Chrome is going to complain. So in Firefox, we should not have any problems. I'm going to run that in Firefox. Nothing quite happens yet, of course. I'm just showing, I'm just seeing that we've got something to work with. Before body ends, we will create a script block. We're going to use the syntax we've used before. Um, uh, an immediately invoked function expression. 
a safer way to use modern um, JavaScript. So we have function, open, close, anonymous function. It's good to write it out like that. And we're going to break it right after curly braces. All of our code will be inside of that. We've talked about that before. That helps us to um, write code that, for example, doesn't have naming conflicts of our variables in our um, functions and all of that. So there was a larger opening, close parentheses, open and close. That's inside of a parentheses to execute this, execute it immediately. Anonymous function, and curly braces, which I'll break into a couple of lines there. And we will activate use strict so that hopefully we get better error messages. We'll set ourselves up to make that button active. We're going to write in an event listener so that that button, when we click it, it does something. That's the event handler, so a listener and handler. Um, VAR, we'll call this EL for element, BTN random. This is our element that we can use inside of JavaScript. It's equal to document.getElement by ID, which ID? BTN random ID. So we've seen this before. We're creating some JavaScript element based on an HTML element, and then we can use that to run functions and so forth. Next line will say L B T N random. Dot. This is a very we've done this a different ways before. Uh, we'll do it this way this time. Add event listener. Just a different kind of way to do it. Previously we've had something like button dot on click equals. Previously, we might have had something like uh, LBTN, put this in comments just for reference, LBTN random uh, on click equals function. I think we've done it like this before. Thing. That's uh, one way we've been doing it. Here's a variation of it. Uh, some of these work um, better in some circumstances. Then others. Um, let's see here, get social. So it's a little bit more verbose. This is a classic way to do it. This is a bit of more of a modern way to do it. It's just that uh, this way it gives you sort of more, more flexibility to get more complex. Uh, it's a little bit more typing, but. Right there, um, classic event, and then handler, uh, classic event binding, modern event binding. Both would work, but uh, we're doing this more modern way. What this is, there's an object and a method. So the button object, we've got add event listener. Notice these capital letters. Capital E, capital L, event listener. That's a method, parentheses. We're saying on what event? In this case, a click event. That's like up here, on click, in the event of a click, run a function. Here is on the event of a click, or a double click, or a drag, etc. run a function, get social. And the syntax is no parentheses. That's going to be a function with no parentheses. If we needed to pass arguments and such, we would use the syntax of anonymous function and then parentheses to our 
uh, function. We don't need to pass any special arguments into that function, so no parentheses. And then that's just basically it's false always at the end there, unless special cases, don't worry about it, it's usually false. Uh, that's all about event bubbling and such. Next line, we will define what get social does. Function get social. And just to check that this is working, I'll do a quick console output. Just something to show in the console. Save it and run it. Make, let's make sure we don't have any trouble here. You're going to click the button, check your console. You should say, hello world. Check your spelling, get social. I'm going to run this in uh, Firefox. Check my Firefox, reload that, random network, hello world. Click it twice. Let's pause there. Everyone has a button that uh, gets some, does some console, console output? Okay, so what we need to do then is um, let's uh, rearrange our code slightly just to be more safe. Um, we know that JavaScript uh, runs, is interpreted from top to bottom. And here we are saying uh, our event listener will run get social, and then we define get social later. And it works. But just to be a little bit more safe, I want to move the event handlers, uh, the event listeners, over after the event handler, the function, just to be safe. That's a little bit more safe that way. Define what, um, define what the function is, and then call it. We saw that it works before, but when you're getting more complex, like for example, loading files from an, uh, learning, loading content from an external source, mm, the project may be trying to load content into something that's not ready. So rearranging it in this way should be a little safer. So after. Line right? Check my lines here. We've created a variable to hold the reference to the button. Now we're going to create a variable to hold the reference to the file we're trying to load up. I'm going to borrow the var keyword on line 16, which means that will actually not be the end of my line. So I'll replace that with a comma. I want to reuse the var keyword on the next line, and we'll create a variable called xhr equal to new space XML, xml in caps, capital HTTP request, capital R. So we have the xml HTTP request um, object. We're instantiating a new instance of it and storing that object in XHR. That's what that stands for, XML HTTP request. This is a JavaScript object that will allow us to connect to something external, like, a, like that JSON file we've got waiting for us on our server, on our flash drive, or an external JSON file, for example, on another server. We need to make a request. We need to connect via you know, the web protocol, HTTP, from our file to another file. 
So here now we've created this object, and this object then has many methods. And a method to open the file, a method to send data back and forth. All of that now, we have that as the shorthand XHR. So um, just to confirm, again, you've got the comma at the end of the previous line, so that then you can create one more variable and then end of line right there. If you forgot that comma there and you left that as a semicolon, you will get an error because we're in strict mode. We never said var XHR. With the comma, we're borrowing var. Okay, so we've got the object of var. We go back down at the end here. So we've got our button becoming active. And we're going to use that xhr object to connect to the file. So xhr.open. The open method of the XML HTTP request object. There. want to open a file and we have various ways for us to connect to some external file. In quotes here we will use the get capital all capital the get method the get way of retrieving or connecting to another file. We have get what else? I think we have request open we have other ones. We have get it's just part of the specification, the standard. Comma. We're then going to say, in quotes, what resource do we mean? So here, if we had this on a server, don't type this, but if I had victors.com slash you know, files.json, I would put in the web address of that file on the server. Well, this file is in the same folder as we are currently working, which we called networks.json. So very basic here. If it was in a subfolder and such, then I would write the full path. If I had a folder full, if I had a folder called JSON, I would name that folder slash and then the file. So we are getting we are getting that particular file networks.json. Then we have one more argument here. True. That one means whether or not the request is asynchronous. This is Boolean. So we're saying true, make the request asynchronous, which means that we are able to connect to that file and do other things while the connection is attempting to happen. Asynchronous. If we had put false there, everything would stop until we're sure we've connected with the file, which would make your app perhaps feel slow to the user. Why did it suddenly stop? And there it goes, while we were trying to connect to a file. By setting this to true, asynchronous, this will happen in the background, the connection to the file, and the rest of our code will continue to run. So here we're trying to open a connection to a particular file. What actually, even though it would seem that dot .open is trying to open the file, what would actually then get the data, so to speak, of the file is next line, uh, xhr dot send. Let's say null. We're not sending data to the file, but we're trying to connect to the file, and the send would do it. So we're not sending any data. No. I'm just trying to connect to the file. So we're seeing we need a mechanism to open a file, then uh, the parameters of how we're opening the file, and then pretty much actually opening the file. 
I want to I want to um, double checking my notes mistyped this just a little bit. I want this to happen at the moment that we click the button right now because it would be outside of the trigger it'll try to do it early on without my input so we mistyped here slightly. These two things need to be inside of the get social function. We don't need to try to get the data from the file until we click the button. So we need to move these up. In the get social, in the get social um, function, we need to move these two items into it. So these don't happen. This connection doesn't happen until we initiate it. I'm going to delete that console output. We know that works. Next line. XHR dot on load. That'll be an anonymous function. So we click the button, try to get the data. If the data did load, do a bunch of other things. So we're going to do several things here in an anonymous function. If we wanted to, this could be a named function. But we'll use an anonymous function so when our data loads, we're ready to, to do the following. This is what sort of is our or checks and balance to see that the data has loaded. If the data hasn't loaded, don't do the following yet. I'm going to break those curly braces into multiple lines. Okay. So inside of this console, uh, inside of this onload function, we'll do console.log. The result of a successful onload is data. Data that comes packaged inside of the XHR object. So we'll say XH. XHR dot response text. Response text is a property of the XHR object that, if all goes according to plan, should now have data inside of that variable. It has the data of the JSON file, which we can reference via response text. Let's see if this works so far. I'm going to save it and run it. Click the button, check your console. You should have some output. It may look weird at the moment because we haven't processed it. But we're probably going to get this raw data in the console of our JSON file. Let's check that. Reload here. Random network. There we go. I'm getting all of this data. That looks like the data in my JSON file. Uh, if you get something about not well formed at the bottom there, don't quite worry about that. But I'm getting the data from my file. It hasn't been prettified or processed yet, but we're about to do that. Question? Little help? Okay. I'll be right there one moment. Um, 
So this is what this is the code so far. Let's make sure that works. Raise your hand if it worked. It's, uh, who got stuck in the console? Okay, so what we've got so far here then is a very basic way to connect to some other external resource. And so here we're connecting to our JSON file. That could have been on a server and we'd be able to connect to it. So this is uh, the, tip of the tip of the iceberg of being able to have our project, our app, connect to some other external uh, resource because all of our modern apps, you know, Instagram, Facebook, whatever, they're all connected to some server infrastructure. This is one of the big challenges that when people take this class and they want to make the next great Instagram app, you can get close. But the big thing about it is that you're going to need the infrastructure. You're going to need that cloud. You're going to need to pay for a server and run it and maintain it. And if your app gets really popular, you're going to get a lot of traffic to that server. You're going to need to pay for that server. 
So that's way down the line, of course. Here, then, we're using this JavaScript method. This is nothing special. That's just JavaScript. It's built into the specification of JavaScript, uh, ES6. And we're able to connect to some online resource, in our case, a file on the same server. And then here, OK, once we've loaded the data, just show me what that data is. And it showed it to you in a raw format, which is often what the networks give to you. But it's, it's raw data, but it's formatted in the style of JSON. We wrote it specifically in our JSON file in JSON format. The, the index HTML file at the moment doesn't know that this is supposed to be JSON data. It doesn't know that it's supposed to be an object. It just sees it as a string, a serialized string of letters and numbers. It doesn't see it as an object. So we need to use a JavaScript command to parse that data, to actually then have it behave like an object that we can extract specific bits of data from all of this data. So I'm going to make, make some notes here at the very end of my HTML file. I haven't written notes in a while, but we'll say here um, JSON data needs to be parsed so JavaScript can use it as an object. This is known very technically. This is deserialization. Deserialization. This is deserialization. So we're getting this uh, JSON data, which is just text in a certain format, given to us to our our index file. We need to parse that so that we can deal with it in JavaScript. Deserialization. The flip side of that would be that we create new data in our index file, and we would need to pass it or save it back to the JSON file. The opposite of that would be serialization. So the opposite. Converting JavaScript object data to JSON needs to be stringified. Stringified. So we need to turn this JavaScript object into a plain old dumb series of text as a string or numbers, but as a string, it's, it's going to get stringified, stringification. This is serialization, serialization. It's just a series of data. It is nothing intelligent about it, it's just a series of data. Because it's in a certain syntax, it's JSON, which then can be deserialized to become an object. So the funny thing that, that I joke is, well, we have a command called stringify. It'll take an object and turn it into a string, stringify. The opposite, I would have called it objectify, but it sounds a little rude. So it's called parse. To turn it into an object, it will be parse. To turn it into a string, it will be stringify. But it would have made more, more sense to me, stringify, objectify. But it's parsing. So we will see a dot parse method to deserialization. And then we would have the opposite of that is um, stringify. Deserialization is dot stringify method. Parse JavaScript method and the stringify JavaScript method. So the data that came to us came to us as a string. We need to use one of these two then to turn it into an object. Which one? Which one objectifies? Parse. We're going to need to run parse on the data that's coming to us. 
to turn it into an actual object that we can work with in JavaScript. I'm going to comment out that console on line 24 because we know we're getting the data. What we're going to do is create a local scope variable to hold the data that came to us. We'll call it response obj, the response object, the object we're getting in response. That's going to be equal to the JSON uh, JavaScript um, object dot parse method. I'm going to parse the XHR response text information. So we'll put that inside of the parentheses. That'll be parse. It's JSON to parse. And that'll be stored as an object in JavaScript. XHR dot response text. And for curiosity, console log response object. So it's going to be the same data, but now processed, now parsed, now objectified. Now it's going to be a um, an object we can deal with in JavaScript. Save and run that, and check your console, and see what you get in the console. Not quite there yet, of course, but we should be getting something interesting in the console. Firefox, gonna run that, click random network. Again, don't worry about that not well formed at the moment, but I'm I'm seeing you've got an object. Inside of that object, you've got a field called social. Inside of social, you've got an array of three elements. If you click on object, it should Firefox should show you, okay, your object has those, has that in the object, social. And if you further open that up, you will see, okay, your zero width object, YouTube. Your first object, Vine. Your second object, Twitter. So now JavaScript, now Firefox, now your interpreter is seeing that data as an object that we can work with, not just a string of data which has no meaning. Now there's meaning, it's an object. We can use all of our skills then to work with that data. Let's pause right there. Um, did everyone get something like mine? I'll take a break in just a moment. Let's do this. I'm going to do console log. This time I'll do response object dot social. zero dot name. Save and run that and see what you get. Here I'm being more specific. Previously I'm saying, show me my whole object, which is a lot of data to look at in the console. Now here I'm saying, okay, from that object, you have a property or sub-object you can sort of think of called social. Well, social is an array. Let's look at the zeroth position of the array and tell me what name is in that key, what value is in that name key of that position of my array in the object. So that should then show in your console, YouTube. 
after clicking the button, and the network YouTube. See if you can load the address of Twitter and then take a break. It's 7.05, we'll be back at 7.15. We'll check that everyone's code works, but based on what we've done here so far, on your console, try to display the Twitter web address.